other than a bunch of sanding and uh, varnishing of all of the parts that are on, on the boat or in the boat right now, uh, the hull is primarily done. So it's time now to move on to making the sailing rig, installing all of the rigging and parts and pieces that will turn this little uh, skiff into a sailing skiff. So let's get to it. So the largest part of the sailing structure is going to be the main mast. Now the customer has chosen from the three options available in the plan set, the sprit rig, standing lug, or gunter, gunter being sort of the sail that most people consider when uh, thinking of a sailboat. But we're looking at the standing lug. I have the sail already. It's been ordered, made, and delivered. Uh, so we are ready to start making the mast. Looking at the plans for the uh, lug mast, overall length is 10 feet, nine inches. So what I have here is a nice clear piece of Douglas fir that I just picked up. Uh, I'm not gonna laminate any lumber together. I was able to find this at a local lumber yard. Didn't cost too much, I believe uh, $130, something like that. So that's pretty uh, efficient uh, rather than uh, spending the time looking through lumber yards. It is a uh, clean sanded S4S or smooth four sides at two and a half inches square. The maximum uh, width on the sail plan or maximum diameter on the sail or mass plan I should say is uh, two and three eighths. So we're just gonna have enough lumber here. Can't make any mistakes, can't go off center. Uh, so let's start measuring this out. First off, we will do that. We'll measure out the 10 foot nine. Give ourselves maybe a little quarter of an inch. This piece of lumber is actually 12 feet. So we'll go uh, 10, 9 and a bit. And that's where we'll cut it off there first. So I, get, I think before I do that, I just want to make sure there's no imperfections on any other end, i.e. splits, checks, whatever, because uh, that would be the end I would want to uh, be taking off, but this is a pretty, pretty clear piece. Corrections on the measurements, because the mass measurements are in inches and sixteenths, so the widest Demand diameter at the uh, widest part of the mast is two and three sixteenths. So I'm at two and a half. I have ample room to uh, trim. So we're going to consider this end of the uh, mast to be the bottom, and there's going to be a taper that is twelve. So sorry, ten and a half inches from the base. The taper begins important to be marking all sides and then we're going to be making a lot of marks along this piece of lumber to assist in the overall shaping. Next I'll want to measure down the center. I'll probably, I want to draw a line down the whole center but right now I'm just going to work on the very end here and we determined that this piece of lumber is exactly two and a half so one and a quarter will be center. So the center marked down four sides, I can then extend it across it to find the center of the uh, mast itself. The diameter at the base of the mast is one and three quarters because it lists it as one and twelve sixteenths. Half of one and three quarters is seven eighths. So I am going to mark Seven eighths either side of center, like that. And I will need to do that on all four sides. Then I will need to draw a line between the upper portion and the lower portion. It's a straight taper. There's no uh, 
curving around or anything like that nature. Next there are various diameters uh, given along the length of the mast measuring from the bottom portion here where that taper starts to get very narrow to sit in the mast step it's going to very slowly and gradually taper to the other end and it's uh, well looking at the measurements it's uh, two and a quarter at a scale of eight to one or one to eight that's every uh, what 18 inches I'm going to measure up every 18 inches and make a mark It would be interesting to know whether that is a straight taper through the end, i.e. if I was to draw a long line from that point down there to the narrowest uh, diameter at the end, is it a straight line? I mean, on the drawing, it does not, well, it seems to be somewhat because it's uh, 2.3 through most of the shaft, not up until here, so it's uh, Two and three sixteenths here, two and three sixteenths here, and then it's going to start to drop down to two and a eight to two inches there, to two inches there, to one and thirteen sixteenths. to the very end tip, which has a diameter of 1 and 9 sixteenths at the very end. So it's rather a fairly straight taper through here, almost through these first three sections, only changing by one eighth of an inch there, and then the taper starts to drop a little bit more. Next I'm going to need to draw a center line down the full length on all four sides. And I just have it uh, clamped down so I can push hard onto this with my marking gauge or just using my square with a little notch in the end. I just don't want it moving on me as I push on it. I want to make sure this square is remaining flush against the edges as I draw the other side. can do just for argument's sake. Let's label this side one. I'll rotate clockwise, side two, side three and four. So I'm going to be planing down the even sides to the thickness required at each mark station. All right, two and three sixteenths, half of that would be one and three thirty seconds. Now I'm going to need to run a batten through here by clamping it on to the full width right down at the point here. Long enough? Yeah, we can go a bit farther this way, make it a little easier to clamp. One side marked. I'm going to repeat that procedure to the opposite side.
That concludes the rough shaping of the basic taper on the four sides of the solid stock. To do the first go around of planing on the spar, I made sure that I had my, my power thickness planer set at a pretty low uh, thin shaving. There were a few areas here in the base that really all I was doing was taking off a little bit enough to knock off those rounded corners on that would come out of the mill. So uh, there really wasn't much to remove other than the tapers on the bow or the, the top of the spar and on the bottom. And I still can pretty much see some of my lines here. So there'll be a little bit of shaping left to do, but I'm gonna leave that to the next stage. So now I need to make a spar marking gauge, which would give us the dimensions of how to measure off the corners to knock those down to turn an, a four-sided object into an eight-sided object and eventually into a 16-sided object and then eventually round. So that'll be next, making a spar marking gauge. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for that and then we can continue on with uh, making this spar.